Welcome everyone, this is Phil Smith, Business Account Manager at FileMaker, and I'm your host for today's Starter Solutions on Steroids Web Seminar, where you'll learn how to use and customize the great starter solutions that come with FileMaker. You'll also get to see a great free third-party solution customized. Our guest speaker today is Richard Carlton, founder of RC Consulting, who will be doing part of today's demonstration. But first, I'd like to run through some technical information and housekeeping items with you. First, for best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in the web seminar with a broadband connection. Also, you can attend FileMaker web seminars using GoToMeeting on iPad or iPhone. Just download the Citrix GoToMeeting client available on the App Store. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888 259-8414. Well, during today's presentation, you'll have an opportunity to type in questions. I'd like to review how to do that with you right now. Just go to the control panel on your GoToMeeting control panel, click on the question section to reveal the area where you'd enter your question. Type it in and hit send. We'll cover as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. Well now, before we get to the demo, I'd like to spend a few minutes reviewing the FileMaker product line with you. For those of you who are new, this is great new information. For those of you who maybe aren't new, it'll give you an opportunity to just review the five products that make up the FileMaker product line. First, on the left is FileMaker Pro. And FileMaker Pro is both the tool that you'd use to create new databases, as you're going to see me doing, or use our great starter solutions. It's also the client to FileMaker Server. Well, FileMaker Pro Advanced, next to it is a superset of FileMaker Pro. It's everything that FileMaker Pro is, but adds some great utilities for developers. Now, you don't have to be a super developer to take advantage of some of these features. If you're just starting to write scripts and calculations, you'll be able to take advantage of features like the Script Debugger and Data Viewer that you'll find quite useful. It also allows you to export database design reports so that you can evaluate and analyze your solutions and even create custom menu sets. Well, in the middle is FileMaker Server, and FileMaker Server is what I like to consider the hub of any good FileMaker deployment. It's where you can host your FileMaker files created with Pro and Advanced to up to 250 concurrent users connecting with FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Yo on iOS. Server allows you to host up to 125 of these files. It also allows you to take advantage of FileMaker's external SQL source functionality, connecting your FileMaker tables to Oracle, MySQL, or Microsoft SQL Server data, and even gives you the ability to take advantage of FileMaker's PHP API creating custom web publishing interfaces. FileMaker Server Advanced is a superset of FileMaker Server. It adds some great things, like the ability to behave as an ODBC data source to other systems, FileMaker's instant web publishing capabilities, and it removes that 1,000 user, or that 250 user, excuse me, limit on the number of clients that you can have at any one time. And finally, on the right is FileMaker Go. We're really excited about FileMaker Go. And for version 12, it's a free download on the iTunes Store. You can go there right now and download it at no cost for your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. The cool thing about FileMaker Go is that all your existing FileMaker files, including the starter solutions we're going to experience today, just work as they are on the iPad and iPhone. Now, you can take those files on the device, or you can use FileMaker Go to connect to served files from FileMaker Server or FileMaker Pro, as you're going to see me doing in just a moment. And today, we're here to talk a little bit about FileMaker Starter Solutions. There are 16 of these solutions that come with every license of FileMaker Pro, Pro Advanced, and even the trial download, so that you can get in there and start being productive immediately. They're professionally designed and have layouts for both desktop and iPhone and iPad. There's a wide range of uses. So whether your business needs inventory tracking or an expense report database or just a way to track meetings and notes better, there's something there for you. They're easy to customize, as you're going to see in just a minute. 
and fully relational. And if you're not, if you're new to databases and that concept is new to you, you're going to see some great exposition here of what it means so that you can grip what it means to your business. There's even some great examples of scripts and calculations that we'll get into. So in addition to the FileMaker starter solutions, there are some great third-party resources out there. There are solutions built for your business on the FileMaker platform, like Productive Computing's Core CRM or 360Works Docubin for document management. And there's some really great frameworks and starter solutions from companies like Seedcode that makes a calendar that you can download for free and plug into your solutions and Seedcode complete for starting projects. And of course, we're here today to talk about Richard Carlton Consulting's FM Starting Point, which is a fully functional business solution that's free for you to download, use as is, or customize for your own needs. And now what I'd like to do is leave the slides here and get into FileMaker and start working with some of these starter solutions so that you can see just how quickly you can be productive. So here in the middle of my screen is the FileMaker Quick Start screen. And this allows me to do everything related to creating databases over here. I can create a new blank database. I can convert an existing file, maybe an Excel spreadsheet or a tab delimited file. I can use one of our starter solutions, which we're obviously going to do here in a moment. In the middle of the screen is everything about my existing files. So I can go work with and automatically open and use solutions and files that I use on a regular basis. And on the right is everything about learning. So I've got some great video tutorials by going to the resource center that you see here. You've got access to videos, training, support community, and other great things. Or I can start a hands-on tutorial. And if I just click on that, you'll notice that I launch a PDF that allows me to start with some very basic exercises on using FileMaker, browsing, finding and sorting information, and then into creating databases and even writing scripts and calculations. It comes with example files. And again, the tutorial is available to you within the trial download that you've executed if you have as well. So let's get back to the starter solutions, because that's why we're here. I'm going to click on Start with a Starter Solution, and you see these 16 files. I have everything for tracking assets, which we're going to look at in a moment, estimates, invoices, project management is a, a, a very common one for folks to use and start with. And I'm going to open this event management one because I, I personally I use it myself, and uh, I think it's a great example of what these starter solutions have to offer. So let's uh, just take a quick look at that. You'll notice that I have an event-centric user interface here. So I can create a new event like Phil's demo, for instance. And then uh, a venue, FileMaker Inc., maybe pick the date tomorrow, a description. We can type in uh, an address, uh, 5201 Patrick Henry Drive, which is where we're sitting right now. And when I tab out of that field, you'll notice that even without putting in the city and state information, FileMaker knows where I'm at and paints a map for me. That might be the first place for us to start. So let's go ahead and look at layout mode in FileMaker. Now in FileMaker, as you know, you're always working in one of four modes, preview, which we won't talk about right now, layout, which is where I'm at now, and this is where I design my database add fields, create new tab objects, change colors and themes, and add these web viewers. Browse mode, where I'm interacting with my data, adding new records, deleting records, moving between them, taking advantage of business automation like running reports and so on. Now, if I'm back in layout mode and I double click on that, that element down there that's a web viewer, you'll notice that all we're doing is creating a view into a Google map whose URL is being populated by fields in our database, specifically the address, city, state, and postal code and country fields from our events table. Make sense? It's pretty, a pretty nice way of bringing web data into your application. So you can imagine, in addition to maps, you might just use this for things like FedEx tracking numbers, company websites, uh, people's LinkedIn profiles, all kinds of cool stuff that you can do with web viewers interacting with the data in your database. 
Well, I've got this nice tab UI, and I've got a couple of other things here. You'll, you'll notice that when I come up here to my uh, layout dropdown, I have some options for desktop and iPad to look at events or contacts. Well, this is great if it's my own application, but I might want to share this with my colleagues, and I'm going to show you how easy that is to do right now. So FileMaker allows me to go to sharing, choose FileMaker Network, and make this database or any others that I have open available to any or just some users on my network. Once I've done that, I might access this file with another computer outside my network or on my local network or, in this case, on my iPad. So if I go search for local hosts, you'll see that I'm seeing a bunch of people hosting files here on our network at FileMaker. And if I, let's make sure I have that file hosted. Going to share it, turn on network sharing. And we'll click all users for that and click OK. I was on my customized version of it. So again, going back to my MacBook Pro, now we'll see event management right there. And I can click on that. And you'll notice that not only does it open on my iPad, and now I can see my Phil's demo event there, but I get a different view, one that's custom for the iPad. And if I drill in on that, you'll notice that, again, I get a view that's customized for the look and feel and functionality that my iPad has to offer that's different than the layout here. So what's going on there? Well, this is the first point of customization that I think I'd like to talk to you about. <clears throat> All these starter solutions have scripts in them. And this one has some script triggers. Triggers are things that can, by user interaction or by some event happening, I leave a field or type a keystroke, or in this case, the first window of the database opens. They run a script. You can think of scripts as maybe macros on steroids, automation of any business process in my database. So here, all we're doing is saying, get the application version. And if it's an iPad, go to the iPad layout. If it's Pro, go to the events layout. And otherwise, it's going to be an iPhone, so go to the iPhone layout. So in that way, with one short script, I easily get a customized user interface for any device, whether it's a computer, an iPhone, or an iPad. Now, the other thing I want to point out here is if we go to Manage Database, I can take a look at all of my tables, in this file, in this case, I have six events, contacts, contributors, tasks, guests, and agendas. I have fields within each one of those tables, as you see here. And then I have relationships, where I've got a one-to-many or a parent-child relationship going on between events as my main context view, to contributors, tasks, guests, agendas, and contacts. And this doesn't just enable me to see, for instance, my contributors or tasks associated with an event, but it also might give me the ability to look from contacts and see back through to the events that a given contact has attended, which I think is pretty cool. And it's all built in here, and you can start to customize this however you want. Well, let's leave that. And in fact, I'm going to drop out of my events uh, solution right now. You'll notice I can't close it because it wants to uh, disconnect the iPad. Well, let's go ahead and pretend like we're actually in a scenario here where we're working. So I get this message on my iPad that says, Phil Smith would like you to close the list of files as soon as possible. We'll click Close Now so that now FileMaker can go ahead and close that file for me. We also manage record locking so that two people can't be trying to change the same record at the same time, of course. Now, I'm going to um, open another starter solution. In this case, it's one that I've got some data in because I want to just point out a couple of other things, right? So I've got this espresso machine, and I can see who it was purchased from, the purchase date and service date. I've got some calculations to manage depreciation. So if I have depreciation schedules that I want to run across the assets in my business, FileMaker can do that for me automatically. And I can even manage check-in and check-out functionality here. So if I'm a rental business, or maybe I just loan things to people, I can track that and manage it easily. I've even got this digital signature here. Now, let's just take a look at that for a second. If I go to sharing again and under FileMaker Network, make that assets database available, 
and then back on my iPad, maybe I look for local hosts. Again, find my MacBook, open assets. And you'll notice that I can browse through these things. Maybe we'll pick a different asset like this lobby chair. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go back to the espresso machine since that's the one we're using. And you'll notice that I have a signature here, but I can click in there and replace it. It's a good point for me to talk a little bit about FileMaker container fields. You can store any kind of binary data in these container fields. It can be, in this case, a JPEG, or it could be um, in the case of uh, maybe I'm a law firm, I want to store contracts, or I need to store contracts associated with projects, or maybe I want to store signatures. So I can very easily come in and capture digital signatures so that folks can acknowledge that they've maybe signed some agreement or what have you. And we'll go ahead and turn this back. And now if I leave that record, you'll notice when I come back over here that the other signature has been replaced with mine. Well, now let's dig a little deeper into the customization part. I want to show you how you can do things like format this text with a color to show that it's overdue and a few other things. And, by the way, we want to be able to get you to leverage your data, right? Because that's what this is all about. So, let's close that file. I don't have it open on my iPad, so now we should be able to, but, you know, it's all right. We'll ask. There it goes. Good. Um, now, I want to use the starter solution, and this time I'm going to click invoices. We'll just save it on my desktop. Now, this one's a little more complex. I have really three entities that I have to deal with here. I have customers, products, and invoices. And the first thing I need to do is bring in some customer data. So I happen to have some, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to bring your data into FileMaker from a spreadsheet in this case. Now, this could be a tab or comma-separated file. I'm just going to double click on this customer's link. And you'll see that I get this uh, nice dialog box where I can map my fields and make sure that all the information that I have is going into the right place. And if something's not, like country, I can just move that up. Maybe facts we want to make sure we have. And I've got website, and everything looks pretty good. Excellent. So let's go ahead and uh, not import the first record because I've used that for my field headers. And we'll perform auto-enter options. This might create unique IDs for me, or maybe time and date stamp the records as they get created. And now I have 38, 39 records here for all my different customers that I deal with. You'll notice there's some great stuff here, like I can click and go to a web view of that, or I can automatically send an email to the contact from there. Um, watch this. If I click on this button, the FileMaker is going to go out and launch a web browser for that particular area. Great. So now what I want to do, in fact, you know what? Let's, let's do this. Let's host that file so that we can get it on our iPad. I'm going to say uh, sharing and FileMaker network invoices for all users. Click OK. And now on my iPad, let's just go ahead and launch FileMaker Go and get that open so that if we want to, we can use the iPad to create invoices and so on. So again, uh, my MacBook, and by the way, this is a good point to mention also, I'm using an iPad and a MacBook Pro here, but um, FileMaker also works just the same on Windows. And it's completely cross-platform compatible, so I don't even know if I connect to a host out there, whether it's a Mac or a Windows machine. It just works, right? Great. So now I've got uh, all these various customers. Now let's go look at, say, Action Auto there for a second. Um, and you'll notice that if I click, the web page will work there. But check this out. What I really want this to do, let's click there. Okay, it show me the map just like you see. And then I can say done when I'm finished. Now that I've got my customers, the next thing I need to produce an invoice is some products. So let's go look at the product detail view. And again, I have zero records here. So we're just going to go out and import some records again, from another spreadsheet, in this case, my products spreadsheet. And I've got item, category, cost. I need to get the part number in the right place, so let's go ahead and um, find
find that. I need product ID up here, uh, part number goes there, and then I need price, which is right here. Great. So once I have that, I can just verify that these things are all set up the way I want them, that they're all importing, and go ahead and import those records into my database. FileMaker instantly imports 418 records, as you see here, and I can click through these <clears throat> and see them going by. All has a price. I have a reorder level here. If my stock drops below a certain amount, I know to reorder it. So now let's go to the third part of our solution here, which is invoices. You know, I may want to do a different workflow, though. For instance, um, the context from where I get to an invoice might be a customer, right? I'm talking to a customer on the phone. Hey, let's create a new invoice. And there it is. And now you'll notice that when I click on these items, I get all of my products available to me. We'll pick something expensive like a transmission, um, maybe an air filter, a few things like that. So I've started to generate an invoice. Now you notice a couple things here. The first one is that um, I've got this payment status, which is unpaid, and that's yellow. I want to show you how you can create these kind of what we call conditional formats. If I go into layout mode, I have this date due since. So if I wanted to, for instance, add a conditional format that said, you know, let's um, add a condition here where if the value of that field is greater than 30, let's turn the text color red. And in that way, call out that I have overdue invoices. Going back into browse mode, you'll notice it's not red because the invoice isn't due. But if we change the date of the invoice back 60 days, right, now 69 days is past due and my text turns red. So it's that easy to sort of show simple business rules on your screen and give people visual cues that a milestone's coming due or that an invoice needs to be paid or something like that. Now you can also, as I said, edit calculations in FileMaker and make changes there that still leverage the hard work that's been done for you up front. You'll notice that I have a tax rate here that I can apply. Now this solution is set up right now such that I can type in a tax rate like 5%. You'll notice nothing happens. I'll explain that in a second. But I want to point out that what I would probably do if this were my solution is I would go out and get a tax table that had all the sales tax rates for all the municipalities in all the states in the United States and then maybe link them by zip code so that the tax rate would automatically be applied based upon the zip code my customer's in. Pretty easy to do. This is set up so that my tax will be affected only on my checked line items. Does that make sense? So if that's the case where I might have some things that are taxable and some things that aren't. But let's assume that in my case, I'm the business that's selling only to end users, only in my state, and all the items I sell are taxable. So I want a different business rule. I want this to basically calculate my tax from the subtotal here. So let's go into Define Database and take a look at how I might do that. In my invoices table here, I have lots of fields. And one of them is tax amount. And you'll notice that it's a calculation field that's getting those line items from up above and then multiplying them by the tax rate. But what I want to do here is change this. Instead of from the invoices data table, I want to go from the just invoices table, the one that I'm in here. And instead of multiplying the taxable amount by the tax rate, I want to multiply the subtotal by the tax rate. So you can see that FileMaker calculations don't require any special programming. They're simple point and click English language functions that you can use to do just about anything to text or numbers. So now that I've done that, let's go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice that now my tax rate is being applied to my entire subtotal. Maybe we'll get a more realistic tax rate for California, like 9%, something like that. And you can start to see how we build this invoice out, do some custom work. Well, before I shift it over to Richard, I want to point out a couple of other things. I have some buttons here that run scripts to send an invoice by email or print the invoice. We'll print the invoice, and you'll notice that it looks OK, but it's not customized in any way. Now, I can customize any layout any way I want, but
But FileMaker has gone to the trouble of giving you a nice little dashboard view of the company info here. So if I have, for instance, a logo that I want to use like this, I can simply drag it in and apply it to my invoice. I can click my text here and type in uh, the name of my company. And I can add anything I want in my header. In this case, I'm going to make it my address. Great. And once I have that, I might want to do one more thing, which is add some data to my footer. Just some simple text, like, thanks for your business, exclamation point. I'll exit there. And now watch what happens when I go find one of my invoices, like the one we created, and click print invoice, right? Now I have a customized invoice with my logo, my address, and down at the bottom, a little text that just says, thanks for your business. So what I'd like to leave you with on these starter solutions is just the idea that, again, there is a starter solution for just about anything you can imagine doing. And they're great places to start out and create your own business flow. There's also some great training resources to help you learn that we'll talk about shortly. But now what I'd like to do is switch gears and show you one of the greatest starter solutions that's available for you out there that's not from FileMaker. I'd like to introduce you now to Richard Carlton from RC Consulting. RCC has been around for more than 20 years building great FileMaker solutions for customers of all sizes. They're a platinum level FileMaker Business Alliance member and they have more than 20 developers on staff, many of them certified. One of the great things about Richard's team and what they've done is to create FileMaker FM Starting Point. This is a great starter solution that's all ready for you to use and Richard's going to show it to you now as well as how it's been customized for a few of his customers. Richard? Hey, thanks Phil. I appreciate it. So uh, welcome everyone and uh, we've already been getting good questions and I do appreciate that. And uh, Phil, one of the questions I just wanted to, we've had been asked a number of times already and I just want to hit that up front before we uh, even forget about it is people have been asking about your starter solutions and the maximum number of records that they won't run out of room in their computer. How many records can FileMaker support before it poops out? Uh, there's no practical limit. There's no practical limit. We've had that question a number of times, so I just wanted to uh, mention that, that FileMaker can literally take millions of records. So before uh, anyone wonders about that, uh, we have databases that store literally millions of records. So uh, it's normally just a limitation of the amount of space on your mobile device or of your hard drive. So um, I'm Richard Carlton. Uh, we built a completely free starter solution that is by far the most popular starter solution on the Internet. And the way we know that is we watch the metrics of people downloading it. It's been downloaded over 300,000 times. It is completely free. It's from this website here, FM Starting Point. It's in use by uh, small businesses, medium businesses, even departments within large organizations, educational institutions, even nonprofits. Um, it was originally created back in the day of FileMaker 10, but we rebuilt it specifically for FileMaker 12. And this is the website here where you can uh, download it um, and, or, and or watch the videos about it. What's neat about Starting Point is that you can use it and only use the pieces of it that you actually need for your business. So I'm going to come over here and take a look at uh, Starting Point here. This is the basic download that you get with Starting Point. We just actually updated the product and, and had a major bug release in the last week or so, and it's got the latest features in it, all specific to FileMaker 12. So it supports uh, a completely integrated model with the idea that you have a relational database where your contacts are talking to your invoices, and you might have uh, projects. Some businesses call these jobs. It's an it's a, it's a integrated business solution where the modules talk to each other. And so we built a solution that works equally well with Macs and Windows desktop computers, but we also built uh, matching screens that are completely supported on the iPad. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to show you uh, how that looks, of course. And so this is my iPad screen here that you see in this window here. I'm going to click over here and of course this works equally well on a regular uh, iPad. Uh, I'm using a menu right here, but you can use any uh, iPad model that you like. And of course this is the screen here. 
And you'll notice that the screen uh, magically looks nice. I'm going to click over here and move this out of the way. And this uh, app is set to be in the foreground. So I'm going to click here. And you can see the screens are set to, to mimic and match each other. Now, you can see what we've done here is that in a desktop environment, the buttons are set to be optimized for a mouse. And in the iPad or a touch environment, the buttons are larger to fit your finger, right? So we've optimized things for the mobile environment. So this is the basic download that you get for free, obviously, with FM Starting Point. Now, if you have questions about FM Starting Point, you have questions about Star Solutions in general, what I'm going to recommend that you do is uh, visit the page here where it says about the latest news. And this is our information here. And visit our email at support at rcconsulting.com. Email us your question about Starting Point. We get questions all the time. Can it barcode? Can it do this? Can it do that? Can it go to the moon? No, it doesn't go to the moon, but it does a lot because FileMaker does a lot. We built this on the FileMaker platform, and that makes it very powerful. Starting Point is a nice solution, but what makes it awesome is, file, is FileMaker. So let's dive in a little bit more here and take a look at some customer solutions, real customer solutions that use Starting Point to make it work for their business. And it's really made a difference for their business. So the first one is this jewelry company. And they took Starting Point and did a lot of the work themselves, and they only consulted with us just a little bit. And they really carved it up. They chopped out most of the solution. They only ended up using mostly the accounts modules, the invoices, and the products, And which is interesting here because they make custom jewelry. And if you click here, they make very customized pieces of jewelry, and this is not fake data. They, they built these screens themselves. They chopped out the fields they didn't need, which was interesting. And what we end up having right here are actually high-resolution images that are specific to this customer. And so as you flip through the records here, these are new remote containers or containers with external storage. This is a new capability in FileMaker 12. Phil I talked about this briefly a little bit. This can store any sort of binary data. And this customer has literally 2,500 records of high-resolution data. If I click open right here, you can take a look at this. It's actually on a server in a remote location in actually in an Amazon data center. That's a high-resolution image right there. There is over six gigs of high-resolution high images from this server, and that's impressive. Now, some customers would have contracts, right? But this customer actually has photos of all their custom jewelry, which is interesting. That's how they manage it. And so in their invoices, they put photos of their products and the invoice. That's the way they wanted it set up. Very simple. So that was their way of creating a cost-effective business solution that didn't cost them a bunch of money. In fact, given the fact that starting, uh, starting Point was free and FileMaker Go was free, they started off with uh, pretty cheap. Excellent. <laughs> so anyway, free is always a uh, a popular thing with people. Like we find that out every day when we see the downloads. People, you know, 50 to 100 people a day downloading Starting Point, and they're like, what, 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 what was so popular about it? Oh, it was free. Okay, that's always a good answer. You know, the, the great thing about that is I, I think that, you know, I, I don't know what the number is, but Starting Point probably represents, you know, in the, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars of development effort, right, Richard? Oh, absolutely. And, and and so, you know, the, the ability for a customer like that jewelry store to pick up this tool and then do some customization maybe themselves or even hire Richard's team to do it is saving them, you know, what, five five figures, yeah? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, can, you can't replace starting point easily for less than thirty or $40,000 on your own because it just, you just can't because it comes automatically with these modules in it. Here's another customer right here. Here's the workflow for this, for this customer. They are basically a pest elimination company. When you call to say that you have too many icky spiders around your business and you want the spiders to go away, you call this company. They send out a pest control uh, van to their business and they're going to go around your business and you're going to take care of the spiders for you. And so the whole workflow is you call the company, the truck comes out, they spray, you're going to sign the paperwork, they go away, you have to pay the bill. And so uh, this business model is one where there's a back office and in the front and the um, and then, of course, the delivery vehicles are actually going out on the road in the truck with an iPad. And lo and behold, they're also taking a printer with them, 
and they're taking this specific printer here. This is a new model that's on the uh, market that they're using in the trucks to good effect called the Pocket Jet 673. It's from Brother. And it actually is designed to work with the iPad, and FileMaker can print direct to this printer. And so I figured I'd show this to everyone to know what they're uh, printing. But it gives them a complete solution, so a back office solution out to a, uh, to a work vehicle that's in the field. It could be a plumber. It could be uh, um, some sort of medical service provider. Uh, it could even be servicing uh, latte machines in a Starbucks, right? It could be anywhere. Uh, it's kind of funny like that. These people are actually uh, going out and taking care of uh, uh, pest control. So if I look here at the iPad, I'm going to click on this screen right here, and I'm going to jump out of the basic copy of starting point. I'm going to flip back over here. This is the actual screen that the pest control person is going to see. Now, they see that they have the target pest here, and then up here at the top, they have the line items, count details, all the sorts of notes and things that go in. And then, of course, they have the signature of the person who's going to need to complete the work. Now, this is the same signature capability that Phil saw earlier. Pretty slick. And then, of course, they can make a note of the conditions they found on site. Of course, it's FileMaker. Why type everything up? FileMaker's smart. We can just pre-program it to make some notes for us automatically. Hey, that's cool. Let's make some notes. Hey, yeah, okay, so the situation's good overall. Excellent. And then, of course, all these notes show up in the database, and the back-end people who are doing the billing see all these notes. And so we give the service, we print the service report right there with the signature, the person on site gets the printed service report with their own signature. Hey, yes, this is your own signature. You agreed to this. Plus the people in the back office see the, the service report with the customer signature. There's no denying it, right? And so that helps the billing process because it's, we didn't just manufacture this. We have a spot for their signature. We have a spot for service notes here. Once again, the power of FileMaker, right? So all this was set up in starting point. And so it makes a nice interface. We make the buttons larger. If it's the touch screen, it's all part of building a custom solution that works out in the field. It also works in the back end office. So these mobile devices are using uh, 3G or 4G connections. And I think they have about a dozen vehicles to drive around. So you're talking about 12, 15 people that are accessing this database on a FileMaker server all at the same time, sharing this database. This database is six or seven gigabytes of information, signatures to keep copies of contracts that are scanned in the solution. It's actually very powerful. So it makes for a, a, a good, robust solution. Hey, Richard, can I ask you just a quick question here? So uh, you reminded me of something I was going to show and didn't get to, which is uh, when you drop down into that one field on service notes, I think it was, you, you know, I noticed you didn't have to type anything, right? There were some pre-populated values there. Can you talk for a minute about how you can edit those value lists in FileMaker Pro? Yeah, that's correct. These are all uh, pre-populated lists. Um, you can set these up in FileMaker pretty easily. In fact, actually, we've got an uh, option here turned on where we can edit these lists actually in FileMaker Go. Now, you can allow – now, see, in some businesses, you don't want your staff out in the field editing the list. It depends on how much you trust your field staff to edit these lists. Um, but we can customize these lists right here. We can go in here and edit these, and I could add a new one. I don't want to mess with this right now. But you get the idea that you could pre – build the canned text in there. So as you're out in front of the customer, you just select the piece of text you want. You don't have to sit there and monotonously type on this keyboard. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the keyboards on these devices, especially if I'm in a hurry and I have a customer staring at me. Um, you know, it's kind of goofy, right? I prefer sitting on a laptop, but, you know, pre-canned text, and you look like a million bucks, and away you go, right? And so that's the whole idea with this. Uh, so these are what you call uh, pop-up lists or pop-up menus, depends on which way you want to work with it. It's another type of uh, data entry option in FileMaker. So in FileMaker, you have text fields. But you can make them radio buttons where you can select a little round dot. You have check boxes where you can select data that way, pop-up menus, pop-up lists, all sorts of options in FileMaker make it very, very powerful. Yeah, thanks very much. Excellent. So we've had a number of questions about this. So to be clear about this, FileMaker Go works on your iPhone, works on all the iPads, from including the original iPad 1. Um, the iPad 1, of course, doesn't have the camera and some of the cool stuff like that, but it does work on that. Of course, all the way through the iPad 2, 
3, and I call it the iPad 4, but Apple calls it the new iPad. Um, and that's FileMaker Go, which is completely free, FileMaker 12. And then, of course, the solutions uh, for Mac and Windows, desktop or laptop. Hey, Richard, can I, uh, for a second, switch back to FileMaker Pro, if you would? Sure. Um, we'll take questions at the end, certainly, but as we go along here, don't don't move, don't go anywhere. Okay. Um, go back to that other solution you were just on. There. Sure. There you go. So I notice you have uh, invoice syncing with QuickBooks there, and I'd like to just point out, you know, first of all, in in a situation like this, why someone might want to deploy an iPad and FileMaker out there um, is not just because it's kind of cool or whatever, but to do things like make their text more efficient faster, eliminate double data entry, and even decrease the billing cycle for customers, right? So as soon as someone completes a job and checks it off, FileMaker can send that invoice for you. And do you want to talk just briefly about the ability there to sync with QuickBooks? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, FileMaker does uh, have the ability, especially on the Windows side of the things, to actually directly sync with QuickBooks. Um, it's, you know, QuickBooks is a dedicated accounting package that is pre-built and it Frankly, it's a specialized accounting package, and to, and to rebuild that into FileMaker, it would take a lot of work. It's one of those things that you buy off the shelf, and it, it works well. That's what QuickBooks is, and it's, and it's an established standard. So you can get a third-party product, a plugin, that effectively connects FileMaker to QuickBooks. And so that doesn't come standard in starting point, and it doesn't really even come standard in FileMaker, but it is an option. It's like barcoding. Um, barcoding currently, uh, you can print you can install a font on your computer, for example, and you can print barcodes in FileMaker. Then you can get a barcode gun on your, you know, those little uh, zappers, right, that you see at the stores, uh, and you can uh, zap barcodes into your laptop or desktop computer. Even, even on a mobile device, you can hack, hook up an app that will read barcodes. So there, there are what we call uh, third-party integration options in FileMaker. So you can, you can talk to QuickBooks. You can talk to barcode applications. You can do these cool types of things. You can actually even print to wireless printers in your mobile vehicle as you're traveling and, and making service calls. So uh, there's lots of hooks to third-party things in FileMaker, and FileMaker has been really good about supporting these things. Excellent. Thanks very much. One of the other things, uh, real quick, I have a good demo here to show you uh, real quick, is we have this one database here. I do show people this once in a while. This is a database that I click on and uh, if it's going to let me do this, there we go. And it's a database that's hosted on a network, not here, it's not a local database, it has 350,000 records, these are all imaginary make-believe contact records, but it allows me to do searches and demonstrate the fact that it's a large data set, it's not millions of records, but it's pretty easy to manipulate and do searches so I can do a search in FileMaker. Someone was also asking how to move in and out of uh, the different modes in FileMaker. And uh, you can you learn the keyboard shortcuts, but I can do it manually. I can show you that we move browse mode, find mode, and layout mode. Someone was asking about that earlier. You can do it, of course, from the from the view menu. From the view well. menu too. There's several actual ways of doing it. You can do it right there as well. And so I'm going to enter find mode, and I'm going to put, say, for example, CA. And so I'm doing a search, and it was that fast against 350,000 records. It brought back 8,053 records. This is on a local. Uh, the database is running, uh, well, the database is on a FileMaker server up in the cloud, literally, and we're on a local client here. And so it sent the request up to FileMaker Server 12. FileMaker Server determined there were 8,053 records that matched CA. It's a wild card search, if you understand what that means. And, and so it, met, it found every record that had CA in the first letter. So CA, all these have a CA, leading CA in here. And so FileMaker performs very rapidly. So once again, questions about, oh, can it handle this? I mean, it's so gooey, it's so easy. It's not a serious tool. Yes, it's a very serious tool, and it can handle tons of data, tons of images, tons of data. It's a very serious application. And so this makes a great tool for showing that as well. So what are the question, questions we have? Well, I just do me a favor and see, uh, what if I wanted to find the people that began with CA there, but I wanted to constrain it to only the folks that were saying, well, let's pick Tennessee since that's where the current record's from. Okay, and what constrain the found set? Yeah, so go to Tennessee. Uh, Oop. We got out of there. There you go. So there's your found set of 853 records. We go into find mode. Okay, find mode. Yeah. Okay. And then just click in the state field. 
Okay, down to state. I wonder if there are any in Tennessee here. State. Well, there's at least one we saw. It. Okay. Yeah. And then go ahead and just hit enter. Or okay. Constraint found set. Constraint yeah. found set. Yeah. And we have 101. So FileMaker allows you to extend or constrain your found sets. You can build your found set. Oh, I found CAs. Oh, I want to find them in Texas. Oh, I want to find the Texas ones that need a sales call so we can go and sell them new widgets because, well, more sales are good for my business, right? It's very powerful. And then from here, we could print a print list, and then we could actually direct mail these people. We could mail them individually right here. I could print a button and mail them. Um, it could generate, so it's already spinning up a mail to send this person a, a mail if I want. Um, I could do an email blast where it emails each one of them. Um, of course, you run the risk of being a spam person, so you've got to watch out for that. But there's a lot of power in FileMaker. And Richard, you're sending email from your client there, but FileMaker can also send uh, email direct to an SMTP server, yeah? Yeah, it's a little bit of a geeky conversation, but yeah, FileMaker can actually send mail out of the app direct to a mail server. It's a machine that sits on the Internet, and it can actually directly communicate with that. So in order to do that, you're going to have to talk to your network administrator or the administrator of that mail server and get the technical login information for that server, which is going to be a username and password and a couple things like that. Once you have that, when you do the send mail command, you can send that information out, and it's very slick. It skips sending it out through your local mail client. Excellent. Thanks so much. So what other questions do we have from folks? Well, if, are, you, are you done with your demo now? Well, I can, I can keep going and demoing, but I'm happy to answer questions as we run along. I mean, a lot of people ask about field sales, and they ask, well, can I use this to do, for example, field, uh, field service calls in the medical business? And, of course, the difference between a medical business and a pest control business and that type of thing, I understand in your mind that maybe it seems like a big difference between servicing medical devices and spraying bugs, but from FileMaker's perspective, it's not different at all because it's just data and contracts and images and things like that. And I, I know that's, you know, probably upsetting to someone, but the reality is is that, once you put an iPad into a service vehicle and put that on the road sharing information, barcodes, print, printing, PDFs, all this kind of stuff, it's the same kinds of things. It's very powerful. And, uh, you know, starting point is a great starting place to build these solutions. And so, once again, customers take the solution. They remove the elements they don't need. You know, in fact, inside the application, I can show you briefly. We, we've done this. We'd like to do this. People will take and download starting points sometimes just to learn. It's a good learning tool about FileMaker. It's, we try to make sure that it's well organized inside and it's very clean. So as we go into the app, we make sure that the layouts are numbered. And they're very clean. Uh, we have a numbering sequence and a, and a naming sequence. We have the iPad layouts in one area. We have a subset of iPhone layouts. iPhones kind of hassle, uh, from my perspective, I don't use the iPhone a lot in FileMaker just because the screens are so small. That's just my personal preference. There are some screens in here for the iPhone. But, boy, I really love the iPads, and the, uh, I, I use the iPad a lot. And so we've got a uh, good structure in here for that, same with scripts. But if you look at the way the database is designed relationally, we've got, we spent a lot of time making sure this was nice and clean. So, of course, we have the tables in here. And if you don't know what table structure is and things like that, there's some great training videos out there from various companies. But... And the relational diagram here, you're like, oh, what's this? This is a lot big thing. Well, we've got a lot of moving parts in, in FM starting point, so I can reduce the size here and start to show you what it looks like overall. And what we've done is we've taken each of these modules here, the accounting module, invoices, products, things like that, and we've organized them together so it's kind of coherent. So instead of being a giant spider mess where each of these things would be wired together, and if you've taken some solutions apart, you know what I'm talking about, this is actually very cleanly organized, so it makes for a good place to get in here. You can zoom in. You can look at these relationships in here and say, oh, well, I want to see that relationship right there. And you can zoom in and see that, and you say, oh, well, this is a relationship between projects and invoices, because up here we got a project on one side, we got an invoice on the other side, and we can see how we have these flags together. Oh, well, that's how an invoice connects to a project, right? And that's really what starting point's about. As you get into it, starting point, you'll see that, we have a contact record, but in the contact record, we can see the related invoices. We can see the related projects. We can see all this type of information. And you say, well, you know, I don't really need those modules in our solution. Well, fine, then please get rid of it. I mean, that's the whole point. It's easier to destroy 
databases than it is to create them. So I can go into layout mode, right? Say we don't really need projects. I'm going to go into projects right here. I can delete the module, right? And then I can go back into browse mode. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut, Command or Control B. Oops. And I can go back into contacts, and I say, well, I really don't need this tab right here. And this is called a tab. This is a, basically a tab object right here. So if I click on this section right here, this whole section right here, see that? Pretty slick stuff. If I double click it, it brings it up. So these are all the tab sections in here, right? And I can actually click in here and delete that tab. Boop. Do I want to delete the tab? Are you really sure? Boom, it's gone. So we've removed, we're starting to customize and remove things. And then we go up here at the top and we remove that button too. So we start to customize starting point. We can change the name. Some I meet customers sometimes and they say, well, we don't call them contacts. We only call them customers or people. And they're, they're really insistent. They almost get in my face about it. And I say, you can call it anything you want. So the whole point is you can customize the solution to meet your needs. You can change the colors. If you don't like blue, make it red. FileMaker is super flexible. I highly recommend people who are using older versions of the product to upgrade to the latest version. It's got a lot of new capabilities in the product. If you're not on 12, you're missing out. It, we're, we're specifically developing for the latest versions of FileMaker and I highly recommend you that you get on the boat with that. So we get a lot of um, questions coming in about, you know, can FileMaker do X, Y, or Z? We got some more questions about uh, barcode scanning and external device integration. We got some questions about audit trails and things like that. You know, generally the answer to a question of can FileMaker X, Y, or Z is yes. It's just more a matter of how you want to go about that. So. Um, we'll give you some contact information here at the end of the seminar. In fact, maybe Richard will put that slide up now so that you can contact our inside sales team. And that, that's probably the easiest way to get to, get to me and my team in the field uh, as well if you want to talk about specific things. But I think maybe we'll, we'll take a few more questions here. Um, someone asked the question, um, if the FileMaker files had to be on the device or if it could be connected to the server. And I, I just wanted to be clear there. So we'll, we'll run through those options real quick. When you're using an iPad or an iPhone, um, you can take the FileMaker databases on your device or you can use it as a client to server. So what you saw me doing was connecting to FileMaker Pro, serving a file earlier. What you saw Richard doing here was actually both. He showed one that was on the device, I believe, and he connected to a FileMaker server that was, uh, was that in your office or in the Amazon? Cloud? It was up in the Amazon, in the Amazon data center. Right. So it's on a FileMaker server that's up in the Amazon uh, data center. Right. So it doesn't matter. Right? It, it can be a Mac or a Windows server. really makes no difference. And what you connect to it with can be a Mac or a Windows box or, um, or an iOS device from FileMaker Pro. Now, there's another use case, which is uh, sync. So if you want to sync your data files, there are techniques to do that. You might want to talk to a consultant about handling full transactional sync. But a lot of times, all we're dealing with is data collection, right? I'm a botanist out in the field, and I'm looking to, to track invasive species or something like that. Um, I can get that data pushed up to my FileMaker server in my main file with a, with a simple FileMaker script, as you saw there. Um, there are a couple of other questions that I'll go ahead and take here. We talked a little bit about um, QuickBooks Sync, and um, let's see here. I've got a I've got a whole list of the ones that have come in. So um, there was a question about how to get a field to autofill uh, with a script or a calculation without having to click in the field. Box. And, and that sort of speaks to something that I touched on at the beginning, but it's worth noting. You know, these scripts in FileMaker um, allow you to do anything in the database automatically, right? They're like sophisticated macros. But you can also trigger them by different events. So, for instance, if I wanted to create an audit log of what people had done in the database, I could have a script run every time someone exited a field that wrote the values of the field previous to them changing it and the values after, and then the timestamp of when that change was executed. 
And there are other ways too. So for instance, you can validate fields, right Richard, so that you can force people to enter data and maybe only enter specific kinds of data. That's correct. Right here on screen you can see a spot where you can actually click on a field and set script triggers against that field. So as people enter or exit a field or enter and exit a layout, you can actually cause little scripts or little uh, macros as you were. Um, to execute, to check for things. Uh, it's very powerful. It's been in the product uh, for a little while, but it's even better now in 12. Um, I can't say enough about script triggers. This kind of carries through to another question we had, which is, uh, can you set up a custom dialogue or a message reminder when a task is passed due? And that's exactly how we do it, right? What we would do is, is have a script trigger want, run when a value in a field, let's say, exceeded 30 days or anything like that. And then it can do anything. It might send an email to the person that the task is assigned to, or it might just turn the value red, or really whatever you want to do. So it's just a matter of thinking about what your workflows are. And in your planning, I think it's good to really uh, uh, pay attention to where are the places where you're being least efficient, right? Where are the things where you just feel like you're maybe spending too much time, effort, and money? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole idea is to find out where your pain points are in your organization, where you're spending nights and weekends working if you're doing that, and then letting FileMaker automate those processes to make your life much, much easier. It, it, it will do that. As a consultant, those are the best customer places for me to go to help the smile on their faces I see when we solve a problem that says, oh, we used to spend 40 hours a week doing that, and now it only takes two. And that happens. That happens. I kid you not. Yeah, excellent. Um, so let's see here. Um, there's a couple of other questions we can get. We addressed that one. One of the issues about audit log, I can address that real quick. Sure. Yeah, f there's no by default built-in audit log into FileMaker, but there, but there is scriptable, especially with the script triggers. And if you want to get into starting point, we have built an audit log in the system around the product database. So if you see in here, there's an audit log um, right, right here. Uh, we've actually got one in here we built. So as, as people, um, we had issues with people saying, well, someone changed the inventory here and they shouldn't change the inventory number. We need to know who did that. And so you see one of my staff here, his name is Greg, Gregory Dibbs. He changed the inventory from this to this. So if you want to see how an inventory uh, system is kind of built, um, uh, it, it, a audit log is built, then you can see how we built it around an inventory control system here, right? So that's a good place to tear that apart if you'd like, because uh, audit logs become more critical as you get into medical records, and there are doctor's offices and medical locations that do use FileMaker, and HIPAA comes into play here. So it's very important for those of you who know what I'm talking about. Medical records are very secure, and in this day and age, they take that stuff very seriously. So audit logs are important. Yeah, you know, we had a couple questions about security, and we've only got a couple minutes here, so I'm going to take this last question. Can we please get the other slide back up on the screen for yep. folks so we can talk about resources while I'm doing that? So um, FileMaker has an account and role-based privilege set security model, so you can expose anything you want in the database to any user through their privilege set. It's respected across FileMaker Pro Go and even web interfaces. So very granular, and you can even integrate with Active Directory um, if you happen to have that in your infrastructure and want to leverage it. So with that, I'd like to uh, let you know about a couple of resources here we have up on the screen. First of all, I'd encourage you to go download a trial of FileMaker Pro, FileMakerTrial.com, if you haven't already. Please check out Richard's FM Starting Point at starting, fmstartingpoint.com. You can reach our inside sales team at 800-725-2747. Uh, you can just type in your zip or area code and that'll get you to the appropriate representative. And that's really the best way to get to me and my peers out in the field as well if you'd like us to have a um, uh, discussion with you. Plus, know that licensing programs for FileMaker, volume licensing programs start at only five seats and as little as $95 a year for just five seats. So um, it's not expensive. You automatically get a year of free upgrades with that, and I'd encourage you to all check that out. Uh, you see Richard's number and contact information there. And finally, I'd like to remind you that this, as well as other FileMaker web seminars, are archived at filemaker.com slash support slash webinars. 
And with that, I'd like to thank Richard very much for his time today, and I'd like to thank all of you for taking an hour out of your day to learn a little bit more about FileMaker, and we'll look forward to working with you in the future.